Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Garage Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is ET 121 Digital One. <clears throat> Today we are moving into Chapter 5, and we're going to discuss basic combinational logic circuits. Okay, so we've been kind of dealing with uh, the smaller picture. You know, we've been dealing with single gates. You know, what combinational logic is, is just the bigger picture. It's combinations of single gates, hence the name combinational logic. Chapter 5 should be relatively easy, considering what you've gone through in Chapter 3 and 4. But again, we're looking at the big picture, combinations of single gates. So we've talked about our AND OR gates in exhaustive detail with the SOP, the sum of products. <clears throat> and here, right here in our first diagram, the AND OR combinational. It is an SOP. So all this is saying here is for a four input AND OR combinational logic circuit to have a high output, both A and B have to be high, or both C and D have to be high. Okay, if you think about that, when A and B are both high, you're getting a high right here, a one. It doesn't matter what C and D are doing, it's one or whatever. Well, that's a one. So four input and or out, uh, excuse me, for a four input and or combinational logic circuit, for the output to be high, both A and B have to be high, or both C and D have to be high. What happened there? Uh, something went black. I hope you can see this. Okay, so uh, and or invert. Okay, this is where it gets, you have to start putting your thinking cap on here. You can use an and or invert to implement the product of sums, the POS implementation. Okay, this seems kind of weird at first, but now think about this. This right here, in our SOP, this output X equals A and B or C and D. Nothing, nothing too complicated about this, but now check this out. Here, the output is inverted of that same expression. Now, use De Morgan's theorem, where we can get rid of this overbar negation. And then get rid of those again. Oops, I, why am I putting a C in there? That needs to be a B. So what does that look like? Well, that's a sum. That's a sum ended together. That's the POS, the product of sums, where this was up here was the sum of products. Pretty cool, huh? So N or invert can be used to implement POS expressions. The way to think about this, the output is low if both A and B are high or both C and D are high. I mean, just think about this. If A is high, it's a one, so not A would be zero. B is high, so not B would be zero. Zero or zero would be a zero. And do it with anything is a low, okay? So both the output is low if both A and B are high or both C and D are high. Okay, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the exclusive OR and the exclusive NOR uh, using combinational logic. We've kind of already discussed this here, and if you've been paying attention in chapter three and four, this should not be a big stretch for you. So exclusive OR, our truth table, A, B, X, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. X output is high only when they're different, right there. Make a sum of products expression of this. Well, it's not A and B, or A and not B. That's our X. So how does that look like in an and or situation? Well, inverter A, B, that's our X, pretty cool, huh? So it's just and or, sum of products. Okay, so now exclusive nor, actually here, wait, one thing I wanna discuss. Remember what I was saying earlier is um, 
yes, you can write the exclusive or this way, and you've got your exclusive or gate here. So this is equivalent. You can write the exclusive or as a single gate, where that's A and B, output X. You can also write the exclusive or as a combination of and or combinational logic. Um, additionally, I lied, there is a symbol. It is a circled or symbol. So that's A exclusive or B. You can sometimes see that in the Boolean expressions. OK, so exclusive nor. So this is a pretty cool example of how you can use and or and and or inverts to implement the same thing. So exclusive nor. It's just the inverted expression of this guy here of the exclusive or. So let's start off. A, excuse me, not A and B or A and not B equals exclusive nor. Let's call that Y, because I don't want you to confuse. But it's inverted. OK, so using and or logic, excuse me, and or invert logic, it's the same thing as it was upstairs, except this output here is inverted. So that's and or invert logic. But now we can use De Morgan's theorem to walk through this whole thing. Get rid of our double negatives there. To come up with a product of sums implementation. So this right here, and or invert, is the expression of that product of sums. But let's say that we do not want to do a product of sums or an and or invert. We want to do and or combinational logic. Well, keep on going. Just do the FOIL method for this. First, outer, inner, last. But check these guys out. Those are zeros according to our laws of Boolean algebra. And we get A and B or not B and not A. So what does this look like? Well, it is still an and or. Implementation of combinational logic. OK, so not too hard considering what we've gone through in chapter three and four. So let's move on in chapter five and talk about some more combinational logic circuits.